America, you are being manipulated every single day. It is what progressives do. They believe that you are stupid, you're Homer Simpson, and that by creating a crisis, they can manipulate Homer into, you know, doing what we want them to do. Now, there are two ways if you want to manipulate somebody, there's two ways that you can get them to do something. If you got a pet or Homer, all you have to do is just put a shock collar around Homer's throat and you shock him once in a while. Now you can do that, but you wouldn't start with a shock collar. No, you, you'd give Homer a treat. That's what he wants. That's what motivates him. He's got a, if you got a pet, you just do a, a dog biscuit. If you're training your dog, shock collar, or for positive reinforcement, a treat. Donuts or a shock collar. This has been going on for a hundred years, and three guys that America doesn't really know, and we're going to concentrate on here in the next month or so, they came from Woodrow Wilson's circle. hate that guy. They created modern-day propaganda, and they created it to use on us, their own country's citizens. They were these guys. Colonel House, he was a diplomat. Walter Lippmann, he was in the media. And Bernays, he was a PR or ad man. Now, let's go over these guys just real quick. And I, I ask you to do your own homework on this. Don't take anything I say as, as truth just because I say it. Do your own homework. Find out if it's true. Read original sources. This one is Colonel House. This is, uh, this is his stuff. He helped start the Federal Reserve. He started the Council of Foreign Relations. He created groups uh, like that to circumvent the process to put it in place of what our founders had put on. House said that the Federal Reserve, quote, uh, would give stability and take away the power. Um, he says, quote, I am suggesting that the central board be increased from four members to five and their terms be lengthened from eight to 10 years. This would give stability and would take away the power of a president to change the personnel of the board during the single term in office. So he wanted to circumvent the system. Now these all were foreign ideas at his time. Walter Lippmann, who's a really spooky dude, every journalist studies and admire him. They love Walter Lippmann. Read his own words. Read this one is the phantom public. He believed that people just needed to be told what to do. We needed benevolent administrators. Well, this was this guy's administration. That's what he did best. Well, he just thought if we just made them do things. He, in this book, Lippmann... He says the answer is eugenics, another really spooky, spooky idea. Now, Colonel House wrote Philip Drew, administrator. Lippmann said, well, we could get to the administration through eugenics, which was an, an American idea. It ended in Germany in the Holocaust, so it was discredited. But they came up with another idea instead of just eugenics. They added a third guy to the mix. This guy, Edward Bernays. This guy was very, very open about his intent to manipulate people. He was the Cass Sunstein of his time. Shock collars and treats for stupid people. You don't need to breed it out of them. You don't need to kill them. You just shock collar and treat them into the behavior you want. Just like the other guys, he believed in administration and big government and everything else but just not through eugenics. He said the best way to manipulate was to make an idea seem like it was their idea. Anybody, anybody see the new movie out? Uh, what is it called uh, with the dream? Inception, you seen that one? Yeah, kind of Bernays. Just make it seem like it's their idea. For instance, Bernays sold pianos, but he didn't say, come on out and buy a piano. No, no, no. He said, if, for instance, I want to sell pianos, it is not sufficient to blanket the country with a direct appeal, such as buy a Mozart piano now. It's cheap. It's the best artist, and they all use them. It'll last for years. No, no, no. Instead, he sold the idea of every home having a music room where the owner would buy a piano because it's culture, it's good. He created hype around these music rooms by organizing an exhibition of uh, period music rooms by well-known designers, he decorate the rooms with rare and valuable tapestries, stage an event or a ceremony where he invite key people, like a famous violinist or a popular artist or society leader. Pretty soon, everybody's like, "Man, I gotta have a piano." Well, guess who's there? 
to sell a piano. It's sort of like you pass health care, but it's wildly unpopular because 84% of Americans are happy with their current health care programs. What do you do? You tell them that 30 million people are dying out in the streets in the country and evil doctors are cutting people's feet off or, you know, taking out kids' tonsils that don't need to be taken out just for extra money for themselves. But see, in his day, no one was screaming conspiracy theory. The charge of conspiracy theory is, however, from this dynamic duo, the progressive left. And now it's being used as an art form. Propaganda, done by these really evil guys. Propaganda and the charge of conspiracy theories. I don't have to go back to the dusty Woodrow Wilson or FDR era. I'll show you the words of Cass Sunstein next. There's morning in America. Today, 15 million men and women won't have the opportunity to go to work. Business is shuttered. 2,900 families will have their homes foreclosed by nightfall. This afternoon, 6,000 men and women will be married, each of their children to be born with a $30,000 share of the runaway national debt. Our government is now taking over the choices we once made in life. There's morning in America. Under the leadership of President Obama, our country is fading and weaker and worse off. His policies were a grand experiment, policies that failed. This November, let's choose a smaller, more caring government, one that remembers us. So, progressives have been manipulating the American people for over a hundred years, and it all started with Woodrow Wilson. Propagandist Colonel House, Walter Lippmann, and um, Edward Bernays. When Americans became aware of how they were being manipulated, they rejected it, and they got away from it as fast as they could. But this manipulation is what's happening again today, and they are counting on you not seeing it. All they need is time to get the framework into place. Now, there's an established trick that they use. Let's go back to Cass Sunstein for a minute. The trick is, when the progressive agenda is exposed, you immediately call it a conspiracy theory, and no one believes them. Do you know where the Kenya conspiracy theory came from? Do you know where that, that he was born in Kenya? Hillary Clinton's camp. All right, so when a conspiracy, when, when something comes out, anything, you immediately label it a conspiracy theory. That is a conspiracy theory. He was born in the United States, clear and simple. Now, Cass Sunstein wrote a paper on conspiracy theories, causes and cures, and in it, we've gone through it, he says the, the government can ban the theories, they might impose some tax on conspiracy theories, and the government might engage in counter speech. But he goes on. He says, the price of credibility is that government cannot be seen to control independent experts, although the government can supply these independent experts with information and perhaps prod them. Cass, you don't, you don't mean prod, you mean nudge, right? Prod them into action. Too close of a connection will prove self-defeating if it is exposed. Of course, some conspiracy theories have turned out to be true. And under our definition, they do not cease to be conspiracy theories for that reason. So in other words, if they are true, they are still conspiracy theories. So what does that mean? Well, you have to discredit people by calling them a conspiracy theorist. And I think they're growing some. Have you noticed how differently birthers are treated by this government? I mean, I've never seen a presidential passport before, but why did they release that? Why is it the president and the White House are always bringing up the birther thing? I don't hear that in every, every everyday talk. They're feeding the conspiracy theory of the crazies by mixing truth with lies. Because if they can get that conspiracy theory, then they can put everything else under that umbrella. For instance, Robert Gibbs did this just last week when responding to claims by Newt Gingrich that President Obama is defined by a Kenyan anti-colonial worldview. Well-documented idea. Legitimate political theory. But what did Gibbs do? Watch. 
He's trying to appeal to the fringe of people that don't believe the president was born in this country. You would normally expect better from somebody who had held the position of speaker in the House. The anti-colonialism article that Gingrich was talking about had nothing to do with what, where the president was born. Nothing. Gingrich never said anything about that. It had everything to do with what he had heard and learned growing up in Hawaii, which is America, and in Indonesia. You see, they are masters at this form of misdirection and deception. And all they want to do is buy time. And they learned it from the very best, the monsters of the American past. The Bible says, by their fruits ye shall know them. Well, what are the fruits of the progressives? Well, both times, when they couldn't get what they wanted, they had to create an emergency. The two times we've had giant progressive governments, Wilson and FDR, they couldn't get you on board. So when we, they showed you a you know, beautiful music room and they couldn't get you to buy the piano, both times, both times, big government progressives rounded people up, American citizens, put them into camps. Let us not forget those two black marks on our history came from progressive heroes, progressive democratic presidents. Yes, the people who are champions of civil rights. They took homes, they took property, they took freedom, they took liberty from American citizens. I want to show you a marker in Missoula, Montana, as a reminder. This marker is where one of those camps used to be. Here it is, if you can pull in here, Harry. We vowed to never forget. May we never, may this event be remembered. Why would we want to remember an event like this that we round up Americans? Well, because the nudging begins. And then when we don't go where they say to go, they have to nudge a little harder and then they begin to shove. Big government does that. And it's the same road we're traveling down now. Understand that big gigantic government coupled with progressivism from the left or the right includes social justice always. Always it ends with one of these. May this event be remembered. Why? So we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. I've seen my critics say that I'm pushing big religion and I'm not. I'm pushing faith because uh, God is our answer. I'm going to do a show though, however, that will drive the critics nuts because they'll never see this one coming. I'm going to show you why the coupling of big government and religion always ends horribly. That is on Friday. Till then, from New York, good night, America.